Okay, so we don't have a lot of nomads out really doing a lot of traveling right now. A lot of them are busy, busy, busy building out their vehicles. This is the new, uh, the new to them uh, uh, Japanese domestic Toyota uh, van. That's uh, Nate, and and that's Shannon, and that's Element Van Life, and they're continuing their camper van build. Uh, so yeah, I, you know. All right, then you know. If that interests you, go watch it. All right, uh, um, uh, um, 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 Aja, that's her name. I was going to say Amanda. Aja. And uh, they're putting in uh, Levelor Automatic Remote Control railer, Razor Shades, Roller Shades, Roller Shades, Roller Shades. You know. So if that interests you, uh, go watch it, okay? Out of the woo, down in Disney, where else would he be? Uh, you don't have to wear your mask. You can actually, you still have to wear a mask, but if you want to take it off to have your picture taken, you're allowed to do that now. So if that interests you, go ahead and watch it. Sassnack Sass, Sass, is uh, building out his uh, Peterbilt truck, and he has to fix a goof up. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, anyway, he made a mistake. And if that interests you, go watch it. Samantha's still in New York there. She's getting ready for her flight attendant job and hanging out with some of her buddies. And they go and they see the Statue of Liberty. If that interests you, go watch it. All right, Hobo Shoestring there is really trying to get an apartment up there in Alaska. He's in the Seward area, gale force winds, you know, it's just, you know, you know, hey, you know, cold, windy, gale force winds, snow in April, but he wants to live there. He, it's his heart and his soul are there in Alaska, and he is trying desperately, Mark there, hobo shoestring, to get an apartment, and, uh, but apparently his credit is kind of holding him back. He said he has uh, quite a bit of medical bills, you know, from, he's had a bunch of issues over the years. And, uh, you know, the debt that he owes is kind of standing in the way. So, mm, mm, mm. Also, you know, I can speak for myself. It's harder if you're self-employed to kind of qualify for apartments and stuff than if you have a jobby poo with a W-2. Jobby poo with a W-2. You know, if you don't have a jobby poo and then they have to take a look at your tax returns and try to figure out what your income is because you're self-employed because you're getting your money from YouTube. You know, it is harder. It's harder to get an apartment and qualify for all that. You know, Jobby Poo's verifiable income is much easier if you're, you know, gainfully employed by a regular employer and not living off of uh, YouTube's uh, uh, content creator money. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not really the same thing. Even though he's probably making decent money, uh, you know, 3000 bucks a month plus a Patreon and whatever else he's got. He probably could very easily qualify for an apartment, but debt plus that unverifiable, not not traditional jobby poo income makes it a little harder. He said he's got to fill out a bunch of apps, applications, and uh, hopefully he will uh, land something there in beautiful uh, Alaska. So, uh, yeah, we're push we're pulling for you, hobo shoestring. Okay, we had a weird one here from Trenton Alley there. They're in Utah building out their beautiful house. They used to be on the road. Uh, apparently, you know, they uh, did a video where they were back in the D.C. area where her parents live back around Christmas time. And then there were reports that there was a guy with a red beard and a beanie that was there on January 6th at the assault on the Capitol building that looked a lot like Trent. And there were reports that they, you know, they, the FBI came out to actually uh, interrogate Trent and Alley uh, to, as to where their whereabouts on January 6th, because they were in the D.C. area just before that uh, big uh, ruckus there at the Capitol building on January 6th. And uh, they just wanted to make sure that Trent, uh, you know, had a, an alibi, you know, that he wasn't actually there at the, at the uh, big crazy goings on on January 6th at the Capitol building. Turns out it wasn't him, but it, you know, there was a guy, I guess, in a, you know, a beanie hat and a red beard that kind of looked like him. And a number of people were saying they must have contacted the FBI and said, it's Trent. And of course, Ali says, no, they weren't even there. But uh, then they really have no sympathy for what happened there that day. But uh, anyway, Interesting. The FBI investigates Trent. Scary, huh? It says the actual facial recognition software matched him up with a guy at the uh, at the uh, the January sixth incident. So I don't know, man. It wasn't Trent.
I did a search. I did a search for a red bearded guy in the beanie at the January 6th demonstration, and I did get uh, these pictures. I, I can tell you pretty sure that neither one of them, or if these three, neither one of them looks like Trent. But uh, there were some red, there were some bearded guys in red beanies, red Trump beanies, at that demonstration. Weird, huh? I knew one from Carolyn's RV life there. Uh, her dog Sadie. Uh, we got a cut on its paw, a really nasty cut on its paw. It was out there hunting for mice and really nasty cut and she was really worried about it. So she took it to the vet and they doped up the dog and they fixed it, stitched whatever they had to do with it, get it all fixed up so the dog's fine. But she had to make an emergency vet visit and uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and an update on her repair skin. She said she had some some mechanic a while back told her that he did some work on the brakes and stuff like that and he didn't really do what he said he did and she's all still mad about it but uh, anyway that's the update from crvl and then she tells us that she's named her van uh, she actually gave her van a name and she's going to call it andy you know after line screw andy get it it was just a joke just a joke just a joke. You know, Andy Linescrew said he's naming his vehicle Carolyn. I thought maybe she'd return the favor and name her vehicle Andy. But no, that's a joke. I, that's no truth to that. I'm just making some, making a funny here. Letters, 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 letters for the 9th of August. <laughs> letters, letters for the 9th of April. Sorry. Uh, Jen says, as far as I'm concerned, once money is given away, then you have no say in what the recipient does with it. As you mentioned, if you don't like it, you can choose not to give more. The issue I find with many YouTubers is that many country creators put the cart before the horse. They want donations, merch sales, and AdSense money before they even have a product to sell. The barrier to entry as a good con as a content creator is so low that anyone can do it, and therefore most of the content is not that good, etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, again... We were talking about the difference between making a Patreon, you know, donation, which is a series of donations, and you you kind of join with the content creator and just make it a PayPal or a one-time, you know, check in the mail or whatever. Uh, with uh, Patreon, you know, it's kind of like you become invested in the channel. And yeah, you know, it's up to you, okay? you got to judge it. If you're giving money for a nomad who's, you know, dutifully using the money for what you think is a good purpose, like, you know, helping him or her to uh, fix up their van and get it running and going to travel expenses, cool. But if they're taking that money and just spending it on, you know, crazy stuff that has nothing to do with their traveling, you know, I mean, yeah, they can do whatever they want with the money once you've already sent it via PayPal or Patreon or whatever. But uh, you certainly have the right to stop doing it if uh, the nomad you, is not using your money in the way you think they should be. But yeah, you do not have a right to demand that the nomad spend the money the way you would like it to be spent. But you certainly can stop the flow, Joe, right? Eddie Smith says, Line Screw does not have any content, so he uses Carolyn. If this was not on the internet, and he knew he's just a guy with a house or an apartment near Carolyn who is this obsessed with her, that would be disconcerting at least. He needs to move on with his life, in my humble opinion. You know, and hey, Betty, uh, I, I know, again, this has gone on for three years now, at least three years, maybe even longer than that. Uh, that uh, Line Screw has been doing videos about Carolyn's RV life and, you know, <clears throat> say it. Maybe say it again. Maybe say it a third time, but move on, right? You know, obviously he has issues with her channel and that kind of thing, and he said it, and he said it again, and he said it again. Move on, right? Right? <clears throat> I was reporting uh, some of the rumblings that maybe Dave 2D was going to New York. Chris Seliga says Dave 2D going to New York was a joke, a play on Tony. Like, oh, Tony. T O N Y. Oh, Tony is T O N Y. To New York. Dave, have you never heard of two, the 2 NY joke? Why are most New York Italians called Tony? Tony to New York. Oh, okay. Well, maybe Dave was putting in a secret message. Tony 3D. You know, to New York, three days. I don't know. I don't know. It is still somewhat of a mystery, huh? Denny wants to know, when is Randy the Mobile Traveler going to get that new engine in the motorhome? I don't know, man. He's been talking about that for quite a while. I think it's a matter of money, isn't it? 
you know, he's been wanting to do that, and I don't think he has the money, and uh, so he's just kind of, I don't know, going to be interesting to see where Randy goes this uh, summer when the weather gets really hot there in beautiful uh, southwestern Arizona. Maybe he'll just go up to Oz Acres. You know, it's not that far. You know, I don't know. You know, I was talking about, uh, you know, people helping support channels. Beantown85 says it's like when can people out there send Camo Dave some bucks and th he thanks them for supporting the channel and then he puts zero of that money, zero percent of that money back in the channel. Instead of when you uh, thank people, you should say thank you for supporting my life off YouTube. To be honest, Camo Dougie, good show, Dave. Well, I, you know, first off, I do have rent to pay on the studio. Uh, and I am primarily... Most of the money that you donate to this channel is going into savings that's going to eventually get me some sort of a cool travel vehicle sometime, maybe later this year. I am saving up for probably some sort of a minivan, and I really would, you know, do some traveling. So the money is going into my content and my channel in one form or another, but I need to save up for something. You know what I'm saying? I can't just go, you know, I need, you know, and then, 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 then I'll get the van, and then I'm going to be on the road. That's right, I'm not going to live in the van, but I'm going to be on the road. Get it? Get it, Bean Town? <laughs> but I'm not going to take that money, you know, your donation money, and, you know, buy 20, 2,000 versions of Crotchy. Yes, you son, Dave. Yeah, I'm going to buy puppets. Lots and lots and hundreds and thousands of puppets. And buy shelves and put them all over my place. That's what I'm going to do with the money you send me. Oh, yeah. Millions and millions of crotchies. Oh, yeah, Dave. Yeah, the puppet troll army. Love it when you posture, says Benny Simpson. <laughs> I was showing off my, uh, I was showing off my Coast Guard shirt that I bought at the thrift store yesterday. I like it. It's a good looking shirt, don't you think? Chi Chi says, even if they don't donate on Patreon, viewers on YouTube think they own you. They tell you what you should or shouldn't say or do. They demand you to make a, mi a video, if you're, even if you're taking time off. If you quit making videos, they nag you to come back. I do get that every now and then. Someone will send me some bucks and say, hey, please, would you cover my channel? Or, hey, please, would you cover a friend's channel? And you know what? I often do that. It's no biggie. You know, but uh, it is true. It is true. And finally, RS says, how about a new headline? People who donate to nomads that spend money foolishly. I think that uh, should be on the, one of the biggest questions. Why should someone donate to a nomad that spends their money foolishly and flaunts it in a video? That's, you know, that has a lot to say about them as well as these people wanting or needing a friend or feel these nomads are like family. Yeah, you, know, I, you know, in a weird way, I think they're not really giving the money to, you know, for the nomad to spend it wisely, they just want to feel linked to that nomad because they see that nomad as their friend. You know, that's, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people give money on to the nomads. And, uh, you know, some of them are, you know, they're all different, right? All different psychological shades of fun, joyful psychology. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Letters and More right here on the 9th of April 2021. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Don't forget, every Saturday, two live streams, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time and 7 p.m. Happy Hour at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time right here on Camu Dave channel. Thanks for watching. Vlog under.